So we're going back to prisms, but we're going to do volumes of prisms. So volumes of rectangular prisms. You're going to love it. Volumes of rectangular prisms. What has to be true about an object for it to be a prism? Go for it, Tyler. Three-dimensional, and two sides are... Uh, congruent. So two sides are going to be the same. So these are going to be objects where you have two congruent or two exactly the same sides, and those sides are going to be parallel to each other. And uh, so we're going to look at those. So now for volume, so that's the prisms part. Uh, two congruent sides parallel to each other. The volume, volume is saying how much space does something take up, right? So if you have a swimming pool, it'd be like how many gallons of water, or how many cubic feet are in your house or something like that, how much air would fit in your house, the volume of air. So it's kind of like the space inside an object. You could kind of define it that way. Um, so basically we're looking at like a box or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to start out, and I don't know, I'll use purple, but we'll say prisms and cylinders. So prisms and cylinders. I don't really have like Roman numerals in this section. It didn't really seem to fit nicely, because like, there's just really this one kind of ginormous section. But when we're looking at this, volume is going to be, so capital V for volume equals capital B times the H. But if we're looking at B times H, do you agree that was the area of a prism? So, so the difference is when we did like the area, we said, okay, area is going to be lowercase b times height. Have you guys ever done the capital B? So it has to be different, otherwise my volume equation, my area equation would be the same, and that's not possible. But capital B, whenever you get a capital B, that stands for like the area of the base. Um, so we can use this equation for a cylinder or for a prism because we're just really figuring out what's the area of the base, then multiplying that by the height. So I'm maybe going to like kind of here in the middle, I'm going to say V equals volume kind of a little key, uh, capital B equals the area of the base. Because if you can find out how large the base is area-wise, then if you take that area and multiply it by the height, you're really just kind of taking that area in the base and just adding the height to it, which then would give you the volume. And lowercase h stands for the height. If you want to try squeezing right next to it, if you have a rectangular prism, so say like a cereal box or something like that, um, the, the base is going to be a rectangle. The area of the base of a rectangle is length times width. Um, so what you could do if you wanted to, you could just have like a separate equation just for those. So I'm going to write as well like rectangular prisms. I'll maybe add it here. So rectangular prisms. It's really that exact same equation, the base times height, but for those, the area of the base is just going to be length times width, so we could replace this b here with length times width, so length times width, and then you have to add in, so that's my new base, but now you have to add in your height right there. So rectangular prisms, you could just do length times width times height, which is what we've been doing for like volumes of cubes or volumes of things for years. So look familiar? Okay. Then let's do some examples, see kind of how we're doing. Uh, so let's say you're going to build a house and you want to dig out the basement of the house. You're trying to figure out how much dirt you're going to dig out. Then you can sell the dirt to somebody. Um, all right. So basement of a house, so volume of a basement. Or say you're trying to convince your parents into turning your basement into a swimming pool. And it's like, Mom and Dad, it'll be only be this many gallons of water. Okay, um, so I'm going to say you're going to dig down eight feet. So we have this being eight feet. Um, you're going to make your basement 30 feet wide. And so then this would kind of be that top edge. And you're going to go 22 feet deep. So you're kind of going back 22 feet. Ooh, that's a little rough. See if you can make that look three-dimensional. Okay, something like that. So I'll give you a second to draw that. All right. 
then let's jump into it. So our equation for volume, I'm just going to, well, it doesn't really matter when you do. You could, if you wanted to, say capital B times height, and you could figure out the area of that bottom. Or if you wanted to, because it's a rectangular prism, you could just say, all right, that capital B is really just going to be length times width times height. But now we take those three numbers and just pop them in there. So I have my length. I'm going to go with a 30, kind of that distance there for my length. So I have 30 feet times my width, which is, eh, most people would probably say that one there, so 22 feet, times my height of that there, the 8, so 8 feet. I kind of ran out of space. But if you punch those into a calculator, you should end up with 5,280. In the units, we did feet times feet times feet, so it's 5,280 feet cubed, or cubic feet. I'm just going to do a little FT to the third power. So 5,280 cubic feet. What was that? If, if it was just like feet, then it would be a mile. So I was wondering if anybody would catch the number, so nice. So. Okay, so it would be 5,280 is the length of a mile in feet, but this isn't 5,280 feet. It's not a length. It's an amount of space, right? So if you had little boxes that were one foot wide, one foot deep, one foot high, like your box of dirt, um, you'd have 5,280 of those boxes of dirt in your basement to fill it all the way up. Yeah, Georgie? If you're going to that top equation, the first thing you'd have to do is figure out the area of the base. So you would do like length times width, so 30 times 22. And once you had that, that'd give you 660. And if you did 660 times 8, you'd end up with that same 5,280. For rectangular prisms, you can choose. Uh, for my couple examples down, then we won't be able to. You'll have to get the area. Jump ahead. Let's say... You live in a city like we do, where the city planners and I don't always see eye to eye about what I should be allowed to do with my house. And um, let's say the city ordinance is you're only allowed to move, remove 4,950 square feet. So, so max volume is 4,950 cubic feet. So you have to decide... Do you make your basement, do you make your house smaller? Do you make the basement shorter? Like, how, how are you going to change it? So I'm going to argue you're just going to make the basement have a little bit lower ceiling, or at least that's your first option. I want my house to be this big. How low does the ceiling have to be? So I agree with what they're doing. Um, you with me in what I'm asking? Yes. Okay, cool. So then we say, I'm going to go with volume equals capital B times H. And this time we know the volume, the wonderful city planners, tell us we can only have a volume of 4,950. Sorry about my bitterness. It's over the location of my air conditioning condenser unit. Um, and uh, so that base, well, I'm going to say the area of my base was the, well, if you wanted to, uh, maybe I should show how to do it. So area, you could say, is going to be length times width. So I'm going to do this off on the side. So I had a length of 30 feet, a width of 22 feet. So I end up with 660 660 feet squared, nice, 660 square feet. So if I wanted to use this red equation here instead of the volume equals length times width times height, I could say, all right, the area of my base is going to be 660 square feet times this unknown height. How shallow do I need to make it be in order for them to not slap me with penalties and tell me I need to fill in some depth of my house? Okay, so then... I want to get h by itself, so I'm going to divide by 660 square feet. And when I do that, I come up with a height of 7.5. And 7.5 what? Feet. Yep. And I'm hoping, it looked like right there I had like a little 2, but um, I think this is bad handwriting. It was cubic feet to begin with. Although this here, I also had a feet squared. So I'll have to go back and look at what I said. But it should have been max volume 4,950 cubic feet. Did I say that wrong? I think it just looks like two. Okay, it's just a poorly written two. Okay, good. Um, but if I had feet times feet times feet right here, I had feet cubed. Feet times feet times feet divided by feet times feet. 
I'm going to get two of those pairs canceling, so it leaves me with 7.5 feet. So I can have a depth of my basement being 7.5 feet. Last one, I don't know if it's going to be worth trying to quick draw this thing. I decided to take a picture and pop it into my notes, so it took me a while to draw it. So I'd maybe just kind of watch along or maybe make a note to yourself that if you have an oddly shaped object, you can break it up into a couple different pieces. But for this, if we want to figure out the volume of this thing, there's several different ways you could do it. You could figure out the volume of the hole, so I'll kind of add that in there and then figure out the volume of that piece that's missing and subtract. I probably That's probably my least favorite way to do it. Um, you could take and kind of cut it off here and get the volume of this bottom part and the volume of the top part and then add those two together. Or if you'd rather, you could have taken and just cut it right here and then you'd have the volume of the left side and the volume of the right side, this being the second side, this being the first. Um, I'm going to go and do it kind of that purple way that seems to feel nicest in my mind. But any one of those three options are going to work. Uh, so now for here, you could say, all right, volume one is going to be the area of the base times the height. Or because that's a rectangle, you know, rectangular prism, you could just do length times width times height. And then from there, all right, my length, I'm going to say this is my length, my 16. So I have 16 inches. I'm going to totally run out of space trying to do it there. So I have 16 inches. And my width now is going to be my 8 inches there. So times 8 inches times my height of 6 inches. Plug those in. I come up with 768 cubic inches. So that right there is going to be my first volume. And then I could go and next do the second part. Maybe I'll do that in a different color. So this top part here is going to be my volume 2. So V sub 2. That's also rectangle, so length times width times height is going to be easiest. And now my length. So we need to figure out, okay, so what is the length of this side here in blue? So to do that, I have to look at what numbers do we combine or use. And I have this 16, that's this whole length, if I add that on there. But I want to remove this part here, which has to be 9 inches long. So if my total is 16, take away 9, I now know that that length, that blue part right there, has to be 7 inches. My width, well, if this thing's all drawn with 90 degree angles, my width is going to be 8 inches there, so it's going to be 8 inches on that edge, should be 8 inches on that edge as well, so 8 inches, times my height, which my height of that top part is just a 4 inches. So 7 times 8, 56, 56 times 4 gives me 224 cubic inches. And that's going to be my second volume, that top chunk. So then for our final answer, we just take volume 1, plus volume 2, so I have 768 cubic inches, plus 224 cubic inches, and those two combined give me 992 cubic inches. That's all the notes for section 6.